Hello, Ricky Tang here. Hope you can see me there. I'm maybe just about in the mirror with the new uh, shoulder cam setup for the GoPro. So I'm back at uh, Completely Motorbikes, Staverton, Gloucester. And I'm here to take a second stab at the Tracer 9 GT from Yamaha. I've taken this bike out once before, a couple of months ago. Did a video, had a nice ride. And when I got back here, got back to base, I realized that I left the lens cap on the camera for the whole ride. I've got a couple of clips I might be able to put into this video, but otherwise, yeah, disaster. So, the seat in it is in its low position. How can we tell? Well, there's a little insert there, which you might be able to see with the camera, which goes away, which gets taken out when you put the, the seat in its higher position. Let's take this for a little spin and see where we're at. I'll tell you where we're at straight away, actually. I'm getting a lot of buffeting <laughs> off the screen and it's fluttering my uh, visor and the kind of, uh, yeah, quite a bit of buffeting in the front of my face, even at 30 miles an hour. We can go up or down on the screen and I'm going to try and do that now. Oh dear, it's already in its lowest position. And that's where I'm getting the buffeting. Well, I'll make sure it's on its lowest position. I'll just do a, a ride to the petrol station. And uh, we'll see. Yeah, still a bit of buffeting there, I think. So I'll raise the old screen in a minute. You have to come up and hopefully that will help. Yeah, that's helped somewhat. That's uh, moved the buffeting out of the way. I'm not sure where it's gone. <laughs> well, I can only go higher, really. It might be though, as the speed goes up, the buffeting might come back. We'll see. Certainly pretty pokey engine on this bike. As you might know, 890cc uh, inline triple 12 valve, water cooled. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of buffeting now at this higher speed. Oh, what the... So, I'm at cruising altitude now on the dual carriageway. I'm, I'm five foot seven, 170 centimeters, and um, I am getting a lot of buffeting. Let's move the screen back up again. It's in its lowest position now. That's moved the buffeting up, but it's really hitting me on the top of my head now. It's, it's not as loud. It was offensively loud just then <laughs> with the screen in its lower position. But different shapes and sizes of people will have different experiences. I just wish I was one of those people at this point. Sorry, I've just realized that my uh, helmet strap is not done up. Can't stop yet, but uh, I will do soon. Or we like round the bend. Oh, solid. And you can lean off quite well as well. The riding position I quite like. Uh, it's very upright. Your legs are hardly swept back at all. They're, they're almost straight down, but not quite. Just a five to 10 degrees back off the vertical. The handlebars are not far away from you as you sit on the bike. So your arms are nice and bent and relaxed. The handlebar spread is just right for me. I'm quite happy with the width of the handlebars. All in all, I'm actually really pleased with the riding position. So just stopping to do up my helmet strap, which I forgot to do. Now, the clocks. Controversial, <laughs> the, uh, the design of the clocks. Reminds me of Humpty Hump from Digital Underground. <laughs> I'll put a picture on. <laughs> rest in peace. I think he uh, unfortunately passed away uh, earlier this year. I don't mind them that much. You know, I would prefer a big single screen, but I kind of like the way they've split up the information for the kind of less important information on the right, more important information on the left. You know, some of the digits and the legends are a bit small on the dash, but I've got very focal stacks so I can read them. <laughs> 
the instruments here. So we've got, I'm on drive mode one. If I bring this big rocker switch, I could uh, go to drive mode two, drive mode three, drive mode four. I think one is the most aggressive. Uh, if I press the front trigger, that's not a flasher up there. That is, um, changes your main mode. Now I'm in suspension mode, suspension mode A2 or A1. Unfortunately, I can't remember which is which. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute when I'm riding maybe, or I'll put it up on the screen later on. Then you press the trigger again and you've got the traction control mode. Um, I've got one, two and manual. So I've ridden an MT-09 recently at the MTM Festival. Quite enjoyed it, quite nice light. And the thing with this tracer is, yeah, it's quite a bit heavier. It's 209, 220 kilos, I think, wet. But it feels nice and light between the legs. It feels nice to throw around. So this bike uh, comes with the luggage, uh, the side cases. I'm not sure about the top box. Can't remember off the top of my head. But um, yeah, having the side cases as part of the deal is quite handy. Uh, they're not on this bike. You don't really need them on the demo bike, do you? The price of the bike I'll put up on the screen now. And you do get a lot of kit for your money, to be fair. You've got a six axis IMU, so you've got lean sensitive uh, traction control and ABS. You've got cruise control, you've got heated grips, the aforementioned uh, side cases. Give the brakes a bit of a pull. Um, we got radial, I think, Takiko calipers and uh, they're doing a decent job of slowing you down. Back brake. Well, it's got a fair amount of feel. If you're going slow, it slows you down quickly. If you're going fast, it doesn't do such a good job. But I think acceptable. No complaints, really. Mm. Clutch. Springy. Not a lot of feel. But it's, it's fairly light. Not very light. Throttle. Nice and light. I mean, we're talking ride by wire here, obviously. Uh, let's chill out the old uh, drive mode. I'm on drive mode one at the moment. Let's uh, put it into four, see if we can see the difference. Oh yeah, that's uh, rather softer on the throttle response there. Feels in this little stretch of road anyway, like, like I've got the same amount of power, but it's just, um, I could be wrong there, but it's just slower to open the butterflies when you twist the throttle. Shall I? Shan't I? I think I shall. Yeah, feels alright. I mean, that was drive mode four. Seems to pull well enough. I'll go to two. One was a little bit sharp. In fact, let's just try one again. <laughs> Mode number one is just a little keen to throw the fuel in <laughs> when you start to open the throttle. It's not jerky, actually. It's just like ready to accelerate straight away. I think uh, mode two, mode two does temper that a bit. And uh, I think mode two might be where I'd be at most of the time. Let's see what it's like uh, at uh, putting at lower revs. Just under three grand, sixth gear. Oh, very smooth. Will I push it a bit more? So we get it to uh, somewhere over two. Oh, very nice. Well done. That is a smooth engine. And the low down pull is really impressive, actually. It doesn't take long to pick up. The bike feels uh, firmly suspended overall. It doesn't feel wallowy in any way. It does feel nice and tight, very tight. Yeah, I'm really quite enjoying the, the riding position. And you're quite high as well. I'll put the seat height up on the screen. Even though this is in the lower of the, I think the two positions you've got available. I do feel higher than I do on most road bikes. So no time to have a, a nice leisurely walk around. 890cc in line three. 119 PS, uh, 10,000 RPM. I think it was 93 Newton meters of torque at 7,000. Just a bit above mid range area. But that's, that's good torque, I think, at uh, not too high a point in the rev range. 
uh, 18 litre fuel tank and apparently uh, 5 litres per 100 kilometres. I'm just slowly getting into this litres per 100 kilometres thing. Um, I can't work it out. It doesn't come natural to me yet, but by all accounts, that's around about 47 miles per gallon. Yeah, the bike so far, I haven't had a chance to throw it around the bends though, but um, from what I can tell, it seems to be a solid handler. Nice cast alley frame there. Quite a narrow cross section in there. There's, there's not much meat there. 120, 70 uh, on the front. ZR17, Bristol Team 32. Very much sports touring tyres. And I think it's a 180, 55 on the back. So quite conservative, not in size as much, but quite conservative tyre choice. So you probably could get it a bit stickier with some with some better rubber and have more fun in the bends. It did seem, even in A2 mode, to pick up the roughness in the road surface. It kind of got transmitted very quickly up to my to my hands. I don't usually get that much feedback of a bike, so I was actually kind of Im impressed and confused. <laughs> The mirrors have been all right as well. They've not vibrated too much, although I haven't used high revs yet. It's just this screen I'm really having trouble with. It's um, either buffeting at slow speed with the screen down, uh, and it's even worse at speed. Or well, I put the screen up and just boost the buffeting to the top of my helmet, but it's still quite strong. So I'm not having a lot of luck there with the, uh, with the wind management. So I thought uh, while I've parked briefly, give you an idea of what it's like uh, when I stand over the bike and see what my uh, feet are like. So I got uh, both feet down on the ground. You can see 32 inch inside leg, not a problem. It feels a little bit wide at the seat, a little bit wide. Just feels like it's pushing in on my thighs a little bit. But, you know, most of the time you're going to have your feet up, so it's not going to be a, a big issue. For me, the foot pegs are not getting in the way. You can see, hopefully, the foot pegs are just behind my calf, so that's okay as well. The up and down quick shifter, pretty quick to go up the gear without too much of a jerk on the ignition cut. Certainly better at... Uh, quick gear changes than the Aprilia Tornado 1100 was recently. Let's uh, get it around the bends, shall we? Yeah, it does feel... You feel quite high up. And for me, anyway, it feels just a little bit uh, alien going around bends, trying to throw it around bends with the seat height. That feels quite high. It is odd because there's some bikes that have higher seat heights nominally but kind of <laughs> feel closer to the ground. I think it's because the suspension isn't giving any. It's not really sinking on the suspension as you're kind of throwing it around the bends. It does feel quite taut. Like on my BMW, uh, when you throw it around some bends, especially in the softer suspension mode, it kind of uh, pumps up and down on its suspension. This is not doing any of that and it's not sinking at all really when you push it into the corners. Gets up to speed quickly, but um, it's, not, it's not in a frightening way. It doesn't accelerate too hard, so you can accelerate without being kind of overwhelmed with the sensation, so you can kind of uh, keep on concentrating on what you're doing and where you're going. Now, when the revs do go up there, you do feel a fair bit of uh, tingling through the bars. Oh! <laughs> there it is. Um, you get it to 5,000 RPM and you, you whack the throttle back and it accelerates fast. If you're a bit below that, I'm not sure where, maybe three or four, you open up the throttle and it, it, the, the pull is a little bit more sedate. But 5,000 RPM onwards is the sweet spot. That's where the... Uh, Excitement lies if you want to accelerate. I like that. And another thing I've noticed, I, I noticed this on the first ride as well. It seems to be uh, easy to provoke a bit of a weave out of the front end when you're going fast or when you're accelerating hard. I shall test in the name of science.
Yeah, it certainly seems um, prone to a bit of a weave and a wobble if you're pushing and pulling on the bars at speed. That's not something I would recommend and not something I would say is a, a clever thing to do at the best of times. But if you happen to be kind of steering or going through bends at high speed and then maybe hitting bumps that you try to correct, yeah, it does seem to me that uh, it can get a bit unstable if provoked. Um, another slow speed report. Yeah, the bike is nicely balanced at slow speed. Yeah, seven miles an hour on the clock is what I'm getting get tick over. So if you're in stop start traffic, let the clutch out in first. It'll bimble along at seven miles an hour. So in summary, this bike, I like it. I like it a lot actually. It shows a lot of promise. It's taut. It it's as a result it's kind of dynamic in the bend it kind of holds its posture well doesn't get wallowy or wobbly um, it'll take a little while to get used to that because i feel quite high up and when i'm leaning over it just feels a little bit detached from the road but you can get used to that stickier tires may help as well um, engine performance is good especially when you get it past 5000 rpm I like the brakes, the front brake is strong if you give it a good squeeze, but it's uh, not overly aggressive, it doesn't kind of dive at the first touch of the brake lever, which is good. But yeah, the only real problem I got, well there's two, is the screen, and the fact that if you're going fast, uh, it seems easy to provoke a bit of a, a weave about the headstock, about the, about the steering. So if anyone else has noted that on a Tracer 9 GT. Uh, I haven't got the, the, the side cases, so uh, yeah, if anyone else has noted uh, a propensity to weave a bit then, or not, if the bike feels stable to you even at higher speeds, and uh, doesn't feel like you can upset it, then yeah, let me know that as well. But overall, it's been a good crack. <laughs> Thanks again to those dudes over there, completely motorbikes for letting me take their demo machine out. So I'll see you in the comments. Uh, please press like if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful. Consider subscribing if you've watched a few of my videos. And hopefully I'll see you in another one. Take care.